Hi everybody and welcome to the Crystal Cabin at the top of the Welsh mountains on such a beautiful sunshiny day. Perfect environment for us to be looking and talking about mental health or the Mental Health Awareness Month. I'd love to introduce you now to Lynn, best-selling author of Now You're Talking. Hi Lynn, how are you today? Hi. Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Glorious sunshine, so very lovely. Beautiful. So I've just mentioned your book there, Lynn. Do you happen to have a copy? I do. I never go anywhere <laughs> without it. <laughs> As if by magic. I'm a big fan of your book, Lynn. I have to say I really enjoyed reading that. Loads of uh, fabulous hints oh. and tips. So brilliant. Thank you for that. So Lynn, do you want to give us an introduction? Who's Lynn? What makes Lynn happy? Who's Lynn? Uh, Lynn is somebody who's been in business for mm, too many decades. Uh, started life as a market researcher and um, that was very good to me. Took me all over the world, gave me lots of opportunities, met lots of people. And uh, latterly I became a public speaking coach, which I somehow think is maybe what I should have been doing my whole life. And it's <laughs> taken me a while to find it, but I'm there now and I love it. Um, what makes me happy without question my friends oh, I love and i think in, in these times of coronavirus and and not being allowed to be near my friends i that is tough really tough so thank god for zoom and drinks parties <laughs> Yeah, I think we've all become addicted to social media, haven't we? But it's like you say, it's a really good tool to have, especially in these difficult times. So brilliant. OK, so thank you for that. So what inspired you to be self-employed, to go into business? Well, I'd spent a long time working in big corporate companies and I felt that, so, you know, 20, 30 years ago, I was this very ambitious person and big dreams for business success. And gradually that sort of faded away and it sort of became more about what really matters to me. And I found that coaching people and watching them grow was something that was so special and so valuable that I love so much. I thought, I'm you know, going to have a go and just set up my own business and see where it takes me. And so that's what I did a couple of years ago, created Now You're Talking and trying to help people improve their speaking so that they land what they want to say with much more impact. Super. So if you're going to let people know then, where did this take you? Let's um, tell us a little bit about your business, Lynn, and what is it you do for a living? Well, I'm a public speaking coach. Uh, I've written the book, as, as we said earlier, and I, I give talks and, and presentations. The, um, but the main thing is, is coaching people. So it's uh, either workshops with small groups or one-to-one -one coaching sessions to help people really um, work on a specific speech or specific issues that they're struggling with. And it can be anything from job interviews, introducing yourself in a meeting, you know, when you're sitting there and your heart starts pounding as it gets nearer and nearer yeah. to you to sort of say hello and a few words about you. Um, so that it's sort of helping people with that, helping people with networking, you know, so that instead of just going in and going, oh, hello, my name's Lynn and I'm a public speaking coach, which is on the business card. You don't need to say that to someone. How can you introduce yourself in a way that um, is different and stands out? So I, I go along the route of I change people's lives by helping them find their voice. And people go, oh, yeah. and then you're off. You have a conversation. Okay. So it's finding that thing that's quick and different. Um, and then, of course, you know, big speeches, keynotes, TED Talks, so right through the whole thing. Uh, and it's, it's lovely. I just love it. And you see, <laughs> it, you give people little tips and things like that, and you just see them blossom, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. As you're talking about what you enjoy most there, your energy is just sparkling all around you. It's lovely to see. So you enjoy that most, seeing how people gain confidence and um, come into their own, find their feet, as it were. Yeah, it's real. It's complete joy to. I mean, I, I coached somebody who she had a, a, a very hard personal story that she wanted to share with the world. And I coached her through that. And she went from somebody who could barely stand up in front of a group of people for 30 seconds all the way to, you know, a 30 minute talk and a standing ovation. So it's the achievements that you can have when you work on it are absolutely stunning. 
Yeah. And would you say some of that came from your own personal experience where you've had to get up and do talks and felt nervous in the early days? Oh, goodness. Yeah. So <laughs> I do. I do nerves for England. For England. So uh, it's um, it, it's something that over the years, like, yeah, I've read everything there is on nerves and, and people are giving you all this advice about breathe, stay calm, do some exercises. <laughs> and they don't work. And uh, you know, and then you sort of think, well, maybe I'll just try gin and tonic. That's not a good <laughs> idea because you lose control of it. And then you think, in America, they actually sell drugs for um, for public speakers to calm them down. So really, this is not wow. a good idea. So um, yeah, so over the years, I, I I've sort of tried different things and, and really struggled, and um, but eventually developed an approach which I think works um in terms of just building your confidence and so um yeah it's it's something you need confidence as a speaker because otherwise your, your audience sits there sort of feeling anxious for your well-being when you get through this they're worried so they're not concentrating on what you're saying so you need that confidence for your audience but it's also you know it's life affirming when you feel confident about something it's just such a valuable part of who you are and what you can achieve without having to go through the the misery of, of being overwhelmed by nerves because nerves let's face it are normal yeah. they are they are what makes us human so we shouldn't be worried about being nervous we should be comforted by it because it's it's it is what makes us human it's about um that sort of reptilian part of the brain keeping us safe yeah and so it's uh yeah, that adrenaline is about keeping us safe and it's, it's working out how to really harness that so that uh, it becomes something that helps us and gives us energy rather than something that disables us and scares the living daylights out of us. Absolutely. And it's really interesting you should say that because I, I talk a lot about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind in my healing business. And we do tend to believe once that fear takes over, then everything you, you're in a chatterbox is talking about everything that can go wrong and we kind of just believe it and then creates that emotion connected to that belief and we've gone we've lost lost control absolutely yeah. so it's yeah. really really important then that confidence is a, a massive part of what you're actually coaching and that's really key to what your business can support in mental health and well-being to protect women especially now it um, so much we hear about well-being and mental health and as you know we're in the mental health awareness month do you want to elaborate a little bit more on how you do do that coaching with the confidence how does your business support mental health with women well, I've taken an approach which I call the pro approach and because I, I, I don't think confidence is something that you can magically achieve overnight. It's, it's, it's ongoing. We, our confidence goes up and down all our lives. You don't hit a place and go, yippee, I'm, I'm confident and that's okay. it for life now. It's, uh, it's something that you're constantly evolving and working on and strengthening. And uh, so I've, I've, come up with this thing called the pro approach, which is very pragmatic, practical approach to addressing confidence. And it's three things about that start with PRO. So the first is proportion, trying to bring a sense of perspective to things. From a, a public speaking point of view, we let things blow up out of all proportion. We need to kind of let some air out of the balloon, because yeah, let's yeah. face it, we speak publicly every day. So it's whatever the um, thing is that's giving you a hard time, bring some normality to it. Try and let some air out of the balloon. And I tend to use five questions to help with that. Um, the first is to ask yourself, what, what do you really think is the worst thing that's going to happen? What is it that you're so scared of? And write it down. And there might be more than one thing, but just jot them down and keep them realistic keep them based on real world issues don't go off on flights of fantasy about the sort of big terrors that might come in a nightmare <laughs> or something. Keep, keep them very grounded and real so in public speaking it might be sort of blanking in front of an audience for example yeah. um so keep it very grounded and uh then th and then ask yourself for each of these terrible things that could happen what uh, what could you do to um 
minimize each one? How could you reduce the impact of it? So as a speaker, you might use notes, have a few little notes in, your, in the palm of your hand that you can just um, refer to uh, and they sit there as a support for you. Um, so what are the things that you can do to minimize the possible impact of your fear? And let's suppose the worst thing happens and the, the fear is realized. What can you do to minimize its impact? And I think back years ago, I had to give a presentation. I had to stand in for the chairman of my company. And I walked into this oak paneled room full of old men. And I was instantly terrified. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I shouldn't be here. The chairman should be here. And you could almost feel them reacting in the same way. Who is this little woman? You know, what is she doing here? We, where is our chairman? And um, I was shaking like a leaf. I could barely hit the down key on the computer. And afterwards, they complained. And I knew they were going to complain. And so the chairman said to me, he said they've complained. And he apologized to me for sort of landing me in it and uh, said that he was going to go and do another presentation for them, which made them happy. The only person who will remember this experience is me. Yeah. So the, the damage limitation, you know, the damage was corrected and it hasn't done anyone any long-term harm so um i think you know just think about how you can how, how you can resolve something if it if it if it does sort of slightly blow up in your face which is unlikely to be honest and then um and then i think there are two really crucial questions to to wrap it up which are um what are you going to lose? What is the, what is the, um, what do you miss out on by not having a go because you were so scared? So you run away from this fear rather than doing something about it. What is that? Um, what are you going to miss out on in terms of how you feel about yourself, your self esteem, your reputation, and so on? And the final question what are the benefits what are the big wins that you're going to get from doing this having a go it doesn't have to be perfect nothing is so just have a go and see the big rewards that come through so that's the the first thing to ask yourself those five questions and to to, to have those constantly on the go i mean you know once you've answered you you might change different problems might come up or different challenges and so to just have those five questions in the background then I, I move on to look at um, programming and uh, <laughs> programming your brain. So I mentioned <laughs> earlier this sort of primal, um, you know, little voice in, yep. in the brain that's going, oh, oh you can't do this. Yes, Who yes. do you think you are? <laughs> yeah, they're doing, you can't do this. Um, so how do you silence that nagging negative voice? And I, it, it, again, you can't just switch it off, but uh, over time, I think if you program different positive things into your brain, gradually you bring it under control. So I, I talk about programming gems. So if you think about instead of, oh my God, oh my God, who am I to be doing this? And that's sort of almost imposter syndrome. And instead of these kind of um, negative views, think of you've got something lovely to give to the world. You, it's your business. You've got expertise and skills that you want to share. So think about yourself as giving a gift to people. Oh, that's and when lovely. you give a gift, when you give a gift, we all love a gift, don't we? So yeah. um, suddenly you're, you're the popular person that everyone wants to know because you're giving. So find those things of value that you can share with people and give. And that message will keep going. I, I keep telling yourself, I'm giving something that's valuable to people. And um, then uh, the next thing is enthusiasm. And uh, you mentioned earlier, you can feel the energy sort of popping off me when I started talking about coaching people <clears throat> and that <clears throat> enthusiasm is so infectious yeah. it's irresistible to, to people around you once you start talking about the thing that you love and you get really engaged with it so I think um, the, the enthusiasm and again it starts to percolate into the brain that this is a good thing I love this thing I'm giving something of value I'm enthusiastic about it adjust your mindset away from oh my God, it's, it's going to go wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. There are other people better suited to it. Get rid of all that and just think of it as that, that sort of growth mindset. So I'm having a go. I'll do my best. And my best is good enough. Oh, it really is. Fantastic. Do my best. And then, and then I'm going to, um, afterwards, I'm going to get some feedback and I'm going to um, take things forward as I learn more and more and more. So that's sort of always a sense of growth. 
So whatever you're doing, it's never a failure. It's always part of a journey to somewhere of strengthening your skills and, and, and sharing good things with people. And then the final thing is success. Celebrate! <laughs> because your brain, um, if you can just sort of send these signals. So for me, public speaking, oh my goodness, I've stood up in front of an audience, I've given a speech, oh, I missed a bit there, but they didn't notice. And um, I, I didn't do what I wanted to do over there, but that doesn't matter. And, but I've done it. Well done. Big pat on the back, glass of champagne, or whatever your um, cele celebration of success thing is. But again, you're sending messages into the brain that, do you know, this is okay. I've got this. I can do this. It's cool. I'm learning. I'm, I'm sharing valuable things with people. So it's um, it, all these positive things help you to feel gradually more and more confident. And then the final thing is process. And again, it's not overnight. So we're, we're constantly evolving our skills. And uh, so for me, it's sort of take the micro steps, take the baby steps, and uh, don't expect to go from nowhere to somewhere overnight, but set yourself little tasks, specific skills that you want to develop and learn, and work on those one by one. And then invite people to give you feedback and, and tell them how, yeah. tell, you know, explain to them that you want to know what worked really well. What did they like about what you were doing? And what if they could tell you one or two things that, um, that would have made it even more enjoyable for them? What would those things be? And then ask them to wrap up with the one big thing that was amazingly good. And so that you get this sort of sandwich, if you like, of feedback that's positive, areas for improvement and finish on a positive and and so you you start to feel good about what you're doing and the growth you're making and that for me is how you start to really evolve that sense of confidence and it takes time um you need to be nice to yourself which is a challenge i face all the time trying to be yeah. kinder to me yeah. um, but be nice to yourself and just remember that you're um <clears throat> growing and learning and it's part of an ongoing process and it's completely normal and human to doubt your confidence sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Right, I love there are so many tips. It's hard to keep up. And I talk about your energy just oozing enthusiasm with your passion. You're a perfect example for what you've just been talking about. You know, it's it's one thing to to read, but it's to see. It makes a massive difference, doesn't it? We're very visual, aren't we? Um, I love yeah. that. The growth mindset, absolutely fantastic, because we do tend to concentrate on our fears. We tend to see fear as failure, where yeah. it's learning, isn't it? We're just, we don't, nobody knows how to do yes. anything until we've learned how to do it. So it's the only way of going about doing it. We don't say to um, a little baby every time they fall over, oh, you're an idiot, get up. You can't no. up, didn't you? You know, it's yeah. that, when you talk about that, be kind to yourself. It, it's really important I talk about um, talking to your your body's listening everything that you're saying you are affirming to yourself and your body takes it on board and it uh, that will yeah. shift you into that place of flow or down the spiral of the place of fear so I absolutely relate and love what you're talking about there with the mindset of being kind to yourself rewarding yourself and you know focusing on that prize and it being tapping into that feeling of elation when you've come off the stage and you've done it you subconsciously you took me there brilliant absolutely fine yes you, uh, every time you have a little breakthrough um yeah, and this is why the, the baby steps are so important as well because by take, breaking it down into tiny pieces you're getting lots of successes and every time you get a success you release dopamine in the in those sort of pleasure centers mm -hmm. and so you get this oh and it's a lovely you feel good but also your your um uh primal brain the thing that's there to keep you safe and it, largely unnecessary most of the time in modern life is um is being calmed down to the point that it eventually will realize it doesn't need to be around and it will leave you to to get on with things the way you want to and your nerves will be just a feeling of oh, excitement and energy about doing the thing that you love yeah there's something very similar isn't there about the the feeling the the energy around excitement and fear they're very close it, it's they're the same thing. It's, they're both adrenaline yeah so um 
they are they are the same thing effectively it, it's that um when it's about fear it's about giving you the adrenaline is there to give you the strength to defend yourself against this thing that you think is attacking us that, that we think is attacking us so it's that fight flight freeze response mm -hmm. that, that 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 creates equally when you're excited about something whoosh it, yeah. it's again it's giving you an energy and you 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 lift don't you you become a, a different person almost so it's yeah. um and it's that's the same thing it's the adrenaline yeah and then once you're in that place and that whoosh that you describe if if you carry on from that place of whoosh while you're in flow it's inspired action isn't it and, and you're yeah. more likely to attract more of the same yeah, yeah fantastic love it brilliant thank you lynn but also i love what you said about think of what you've got to talk about as you're sharing you're giving it's more in kindness rather than thinking well are they going to be interested why should I why should I be the one talking about this particular topic who's going to listen to me this imposter syndrome as you say yeah that's a lovely way to overcome that by imagining that you're sharing what what floats your boat with other people so they can feel the same love that yeah and I think I think the thing is when you think about um, choosing a gift for somebody you're um, you're getting them some something that you know they will value and it's the same when you're um gifting whatever it is you're doing you're you're giving it to people that you know will be interested you don't just randomly take your offer out to the whole world and hope it lands it, it's selective so if you're giving for in, in in speaking if you're going to an event a conference it'll be you've been invited because they see something of value that you can offer to their audience so it's sort of find the thing that um that your audience wants and will appreciate and then you position what you're offering to them in in the way that they're going to see the value and then you become this generous giver generous quite that's it i shall never see you the same again this is lynn the generous giver <laughs> <laughs> thank you Lynn. fabulous tips there raising confidence certainly really key at the moment with uh, well-being month thank you for that uh, you obviously enjoy what you do it puts you in flow and it's your passion shines through and it's certainly come through in the book as well for me as well so fabulous keep keep doing that keep keep us in the right direction so for anybody starting new or anybody that's fairly young in their business in these difficult times with covid or on our way out let's let's look at the positive we're on our way out again what golden tips have you got to offer as a woman in business to the rest of us i think um, for women, there are some very clear uh, things that we struggle with, perhaps more than men. I don't know how well documented the gender differences are, but the things that we, we do struggle with. One of them is that imposter syndrome. Oh, who am I to be doing this thing? Why should anyone care about me and what I have to say? And that sort of nagging voice in the head. Um, there's the perfectionist. We're we're plagued with yeah. perfectionism compared to compared to men. And there's rafts of data out there about how a man will know virtually nothing but give it a go, whereas a woman has to know everything plus 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 yeah. before she'll even consider having a go. Um, and you know that we're 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 big on risk. We're, we're always assessing for risk. So it, it's sort of. Um, what can go wrong we're looking for it before before we even give ourselves the chance so i think that one of the things that um i i, dis I discovered as a result of writing the book um is to identify what are those things that are coming to give you a hard time find work out what they are um stop yourself in your tracks and be very conscious of what you're saying and how you're saying it and how you're responding to things how you're feeling about different things and be ready for them because they will come oh, yeah. they will come to try and upset things and make life difficult for you so be ready for them so if, um uh for example the imposter syndrome I, I i i will sit there and sort of go do you know what i really don't need you today thank you very much for coming and and uh, trying to look after me and make things okay but do you know what just get yourself a gin and tonic and go and sit yeah. in the corner and relax <laughs> thank you 
So the minute I feel like that, that I dispatch it with this sort of little um, dialogue in my head. And um, so you can write the write yourself a little. This is the devil that's coming to get me. Yeah. And this is what I want to say to them when they arrive. And uh, you know, acknowledge that they're they're coming to help. They're not. They're not. These things aren't just coming from a bad place. They're coming for a good reason to look after us and to help us um, be, feel good about ourselves. But they have the opposite effect a lot of the time. So just be ready with your make a note. Here's the here's the devil and here's my response. And then just fire it out. And then sit back and go, right, I'm ready. <laughs> so that would be my tip. Don't, don't ever be put off by following your dream. If, you, if you've got something you really want to do and it really excites you, go for it. And these little things that come to upset, be ready for them because it's quite normal that they should appear and be ready to dispatch them. Absolutely. So that would be my tip. Fantastic. I think also about being um, your true self, being true to yourself. For me, you know, once you, if you've got that dream, if you're aligning your thoughts with your heart's desires, it'll keep you driven to move forward and always be true to yourself. Always be true to yourself. I know that's a big one for you too. You can tell us a story. I, I, I think it's, it's massively important. And uh, I was talking to a friend the other night and we were busy doing our uh, sort of core strengths and values thing and mine all comes out as integrity and honesty and mm. you know big but uh, we can recognize a lack of authenticity at 50 paces these days yeah. we demand it from people so that you have absolutely everything to gain from being yourself don't hide behind a persona don't wish you were somebody else be yourself put yourself out there and, and um, people will come will come to you for your for your honesty and your um, and, you know they'll connect with you because they 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 like what you're doing and you yeah. don't want people connecting with you who don't like what you're doing so it it's, it starts to filter if you like so that you um, you you're going after your right niche it's somewhere you feel comfortable you set up your own business you want to feel good about it so you feel good because you're being yourself. And the people that you're helping feel good. So what could be better than that? Yeah, because we do at the early days, you try to be all things to all people and spread yourself too thin and end up not pleasing anybody, let alone yourself. I remember that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. completely yeah, related. You need to, to find you. that niche and target it. So um, who so do you want to be working with? Sorry. Sorry. So have you had the choice? Would you change anything? about how you've gone about your journey being a woman in business or would you do it all again i would do it all again but one thing i would change actually is i would um try to set up with an active partner so somebody working with somebody because i thrive and at the beginning when i said about my friends i thrive much better with other people bouncing off each other encouraging each other driving somewhere together you get much more I, I think I, I, you know, I, I, I can be pushed into all sorts of um, exciting opportunities <laughs> because, because of the energy that's coming from the other person, which uh, I don't get when I'm on my own. So yeah. if you do have an opportunity to work with somebody or to have um, a, a coach that's a really big part of, of supporting what you're doing, yeah. um, I think that that's probably very, very powerful. So that, yeah. that is a change that I would make. Because on my own, it's quite hard. Um, yeah. It's good to have yeah. a network, though. If you are, if anybody is on their own and isn't in a position to work with somebody else just yet or collaborate, I would always say that you can get that support and energy from networking uh, and meeting. You make yeah. great friends. And, and it's also almost like if you've come from a corporate world, for example, and you've used to picking up the phone to different departments and now they've gone, then the people in the network are those departments they're your colleagues aren't they and can yeah what from there uh, i think one of the um really big things that i would advocate is never be afraid to ask yeah. never be afraid to ask people can say no um so you're not forcing anyone to do anything but if you want some help with something ask and if you do it nicely people won't be offended they won't be put off uh, you know, and if they don't want to do it or can't do it, they might recommend somebody else or explain why they can't. But uh, never be afraid to ask. Yeah, I absolutely. Think that that's a very important. Thing. 
So what does the future look like then for now you're talking? What, what does, has it been a reflective time while we've been staying at home, staying safe for you and your business? Are things going to be different moving forward? Uh, I, I think one of the things it has done is that I've been trying to do all sorts of businessy things like PR and all these sorts of things. And I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> I don't Say it how it is then. They're, they're, they're sort of out of my league. And I, I you know, if I, if I had tons of money, I would pay somebody to just take it away from me. But so one of the things that I have decided is that I'm not... Um, going forward i'm not going to do things that i really don't have to do Happy so enough. that i'm free to focus on what i love doing yeah and which is why i set up in the first place and you know so it, it, for this to be a beautiful experience that i'm really loving i have to be doing what i'm loving not doing a lot of um admin, uh, admin stroke business stroke marketing things that i'm not so good at so yeah. um, or not really enjoying so much so um Yes, so the emphasis has changed. Um, Very good. In that sense, and I'm taking it back to where I came in. <laughs> Again, that's the yeah. growth mindset for putting a positive spin on a situation we were completely out of control with. And, yeah. and it's been time to reflect, really, hasn't it? Yes, yes. And um, hopefully, coming up with some new ideas about things I can offer to people that, are, that make sense for the new the new world <laughs> <laughs> the new so, normal yeah. we keep being told it's the new normal yeah so i know we'll but see. i'm hearing people saying that they're fed up with the expression now so i'm trying not to say it anymore <laughs> it's going to come up with something else as well instead yeah new expression for new normal <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'll leave that one with you well there's plenty of yeah. opportunities within the mothership and network she for us all to share each other's skills and abilities that network that we're talking about especially you know it doesn't have to be in a just in a time of mental health awareness but certainly coming out of the covid it's affected people in different ways we're all individuals and it's just so nice to be part of a community that's willing to share and to help each other and like you say when you share when something makes you feel good and then you're more likely to continue to feel good and do something else that's a, an, an act of kindness kindness costs nothing does it absolutely well i've thoroughly enjoyed listening to you lynn and learning more about you and your business there's a couple of references there to g and t and champagne so i'm getting that you're a bit of a party uh, yes. girl on the quiet <laughs> I, I like i like a drink but with my, I, you know again i prefer it with my friends when yeah. if this goes on too long it could be um yeah so the, <laughs> the alcohol needs to um, get it <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I do. I love. I love to go out with my friends to have drinks, to have dinner together. It's just wonderful. Uh, well, yeah. well, when when we're allowed to go and play out, you're more than welcome to come and visit me on the Welsh mountains in Crystal Cabin, and we'll crack. I will, will be there. The I will be there. <laughs> oh, lovely speaking to you, Lynn. Take care. Thank you very much, and hope to see you soon. You too. You right. too. Bye, love. Bye. 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 Bye.